Let's talk about Danny. Hey, wait a minute, no. Let's talk about SAF in OM1 and what is the fuss all about. And I will give you a few solutions if you have some problems with it. Hi, it's Peter here and let's get right into the business. The reason I'm making this video is of course because Robin Wong found some troubling things about the SAF in low light and low uh, contrast situations. And Rob Trek made also a video about the same issue. And we're talking about here low light with low contrast. The SAF in good lighting conditions is totally fine and it is actually faster than the older ones and I will show you why it is faster. Another reason that I made this video is because I haven't had any troubles with that. On the other hand, I haven't photographed white walls only or in really low light situations with the camera. So it, I've been using it for a year and I've had no problems with that. And of course this interested me because you can clearly see that there were some problems. You can clearly see it from Robin's videos and also from Rob Tech's videos. And that's why I wanted to do my own tests. And when we're talking about low light situation with those circumstances, with those settings, yes, they were totally legit results. But I will clear some misunderstandings about the SAF in OM1. I contacted OMDS and did not get an official answer, but unofficially I did get some answers and I will get to those little, small points. And then I also contacted Thomas Eisel, a photographer from Vienna, Austria, who uses OM1 as one of his cameras. Then he has some old DSLRs from Nikon, full frame cameras, and then he also uses medium format Pentax camera. So he, he has kind of like a wider knowledge of how things work. And I had a little chat and let's listen to Thomas and what he has to say when I interviewed him. Thank you so much, Thomas, for being here. How are you? Well, uh, thank you very much for having me, Peter. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Great, great to hear. So you're uh, well aware of the SAF issue that's been, you know, going around YouTube. What is your take on that? What have you to say or what's your opinion about it? Well, I was actually quite surprised to hear about it in the first place because in, in practice, I actually never noticed a thing, right? And maybe, maybe just as a little introduction, right? I'm mostly shooting fashion and editorial. And of course, that includes, for example, uh, fashion shows. So really circumstances where it's pretty dark, pretty difficult. You have like long lenses and stuff. And I, I never had an issue, right? And, and previously I've shot these events with, uh, with other cameras, for example, like Nikon DSLRs and right. And Actually, I was surprised how good and reliable the autofocus of the OM1 was. So, yeah, that's the thing. I was I was really surprised, to be honest. Yeah. So, so, what do you think that has happened there? What's what's your take? That why? Because it clearly showed in the video that it it wasn't as good as you would expect. So, what was going on there? Yeah, I. I believe actually that um, the autofocus in the OM1 works quite differently compared to previous Olympus models. And I had myself shot for, with the EM1 Mark II, for example. And from what I recall with this model is that the autofocus area in SAF is actually a bit bigger, right? And in the OM1, it kind of gives us this little green um, indicator, but actually the autofocus point is incredibly small and super precise. So it, I think it actually has to do with autofocus point placement, right? So, uh, but you showed in a, in a short YouTube short video that if you use so-called zoom view, you get better results with SAF on OM1. Yeah, yeah. And um, actually, I think um, what we are seeing here is that uh, when you're using the single point autofocus, you are actually using this pinpoint, super accurate contrast detection uh, mode in the OM1. So it's really cool for shooting like long lenses at long distances wide open. And you really want to get the eye in focus, some really things that weren't quite possible with previous cameras, but uh, 
when you are trying to focus on on stuff in very very dark conditions and featureless surfaces right then you actually need a bigger detection area and when you go into the SAF thing and you just expand the AF area it won't do a thing because you are just getting more of these very small pinpoint focus points but when you use this uh, touch autofocus or zoom autofocus so then you get actually a big detection area and the OM1 instantly focuses no matter how dark yeah so it's um, more of a like what kind of settings you are using what about CAF because when I did some tests preliminary tests I got a lot better results with CAF have you noticed the same absolutely um, absolutely I myself use CAF practically all the time but when I use long lenses right and, and wide open lenses the lens is wide open then I actually use the SAF but with CAF in close distances well, the results are actually better. And I think it's um, quite obvious what's happening here as well, because the OM1 uses predominantly phase detection when in CAF and the mode of detection is just a bit different and the area is actually a bit wider that it is using then, right? just the nature of the mode. And then you get uh, better focus in darker conditions, I'd say, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's more about the settings than than the lack of capabilities in OM1 and then you had another YouTube short that where you showed where you focused to a piece of paper and not this way but the paper was like this way really thin paper and you got get pretty good results I have not yet tested that but I will do that also so doesn't that tell that the the small or the the single autofocus point is actually quite accurate when when used in a bit more light or what, what what does it tell um absolutely yes i would i would totally agree and um, it actually really shows the pinpoint accuracy i mean I've, I've said it a couple of times now right but this is really impressive i mean i put a sheet of paper it's like 0 0.1 0 0.2 millimeters something and i focused on it with the 75 f 1.8 wide open and the camera instantly grabbed focus on the paper's edge and that's one thing that's quite impressive but what is really impressive at least for me is that the camera was able to place the plane of critical focus right at the paper's edge so it was not like you know getting it in the ballpark with the depth of field and then you're like oh yeah it's pretty sharp no it was like really on the edge and this is incredible and to be honest I am quite amazed by the SAF in the OM1. In my daily work, I actually use that a lot to my advantage. For example, when I'm, you know, I'm taking a portrait with something like this uh, 42.5, uh, 1.2, and you really, I mean, you can focus on a on a on a port, on a model like eight meters away, and it's usually gonna be sharp, but. With this pinpoint accuracy, I can really place the plane of critical focus right at the eye level. And it sounds like a very technical thing that you wouldn't really notice in practice. But once you tried that and once you saw how much the difference is actually between having the plane of focus like a little bit far uh, here or in front of the subject, then you really see how important this kind of focusing accuracy is. So actually I would have recommended the OM1 because of its good high precision SAF to be honest. Well I'm, I'm glad to hear and thank you so much Thomas for being my guest on this and I get the chance to interview you because you seem to really know what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Peter. Thanks Thomas and he also has a YouTube channel which I will link in the description and also in the end screen will be a link to his channel but more about that a bit later what he's up to right now with his channel. And now a few comments about what Thomas said. And it is in line with what I got from OMDS. There are most likely some differences how the SAF works on OM1 than it works in EM1 Mark III, for example, and some other old, old, older Olympus cameras. And that's the point here. It works slightly differently. It looks like the camera gives more 
OM1 gives more weight to contrast AF in SAF single point than the older models. There's also another small difference. And in CAF I get a lot better results, almost perfect results, and it gives more weight to face detection. That's what is most likely happening here. Because I did get a lot better results, like I said, with CAF. Before I talk about my results, a few things how to solve the problem. The first solution is to use CAF in low light and low contrast situation with OM1, because it works slightly differently. It seems that the so-called threshold, how it affects or how it reads the contrast is different than it used to be. For now, using CAF, it takes care of the problem in low light situation. So the problem is partly solved. It's just you need to use different settings when you're using the camera in low light with low contrast. The second solution is to use zoom view SAF. This might be a bit of a surprise and this is something that I found out from Thomas Eisel's YouTube short videos that he made about this issue and that's why actually I contacted him because I wanted to talk to him and then we had a nice chat and I d decided to have his opinion on my on my uh, video as you already have seen. When you use the zoom view AF the area is a lot bigger so it has more room to look for the contrast and I got a lot better results with that. I know it's not the most convenient way but this is how EM1 Mark III works so it has to do with the size of the AF point. But more about that when I show how much faster the SAF is in OM1. And then the third solution is to use SAF plus MF. Another solution that might not be the most convenient but this way you can fine-tune the result from the AF on OM1 and this works with other Olympus cameras too. This is one way of doing when it's really really dark. Then what about my test results? Of course when you're doing a lab test and trying to find out what's what's wrong and why this happened and why I was also interested in this because it wasn't the lab test that failed first it was in real life situation where Robin was photographing some concerts or some other stuff that had low light and low contrast. The reason I'm saying this low contrast and low light is because then it has some problems with the small AF points. In good light it is faster like I said or I think a couple of times but I want to make clear because I've gotten messages where they ask me why SAF is slower in OM1. It actually isn't. And then when you're in real life situation photographing you try to solve the problem. You don't want the camera to fail because you want those images and so the state of mind is slightly different and also I made a set that most likely the camera will fail. I had this set up, the phone case is black and it has some you know dark gray stripes but you cannot see in this light them with your uh, naked eye. It is so dark, it is 4 seconds at f2.8 ISO 200. With OM1 I got 70% hit rate with SAF and the single autofocus point. With uh, CAF it was 80% and with zoom view AF it was 98%. And the EM1 Mark III got me about the same results. Of course I didn't use the uh, zoom view because I didn't need to because it has a bigger uh, single autofocus point and it gave me 98% accuracy. So it is slightly better but not that much if you compare it to CAF or you can think that it is a lot better. So there is truth what Robin says that it is slightly better because of the way the AF, SAF works. Then I tested the speed with this setup when there was more light and here OM1 was way faster and way more accurate and that's why they have chosen to use the single AF point like they have on OM1. It works better with longer lenses too and that is also the same thing that Thomas Eisel said as you already heard. The reason OM1 is slightly faster because it has the smaller AF point and on these situations it has an advantage. So then the conclusion. Like I said in the beginning it's wrong to say that SAF is slower in OM1. It is a bit slower when it is really low light and low contrast if you use SAF. If you use CAF you kind of solve the problem. But should OMDS address this with a firmware update? I don't know if it's possible but maybe it is. They could change the threshold and they could 
maybe introduce a different type of AF points for single autofocus. I don't know, maybe they could. I'm not sure if it's possible with the new sensor, which is actually the first uh, that type of sensor that is in a camera, the, the quad pixel thing that it's actually an 80 megapixel sensor that uses 20 megapixel things. I'm not really into <laughs> that much into the sensor, but that's roughly the, the whole point. But then when there is really need of for precision in slightly more amount of light, it works a lot, lot faster as you saw from the footage that I showed. There is a, you know, I tried it several times and every time there was, OM1 was more reliable on that. So this is really good for macro, for example. And like Thomas said in the interview, that it can find the human eye a lot easier than the bigger one. So my suggestion is to use CAF in low light and low contrast situation if you're using OM1. It works better than the SAF. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to Thomas Eisel's YouTube channel. He is making a video, or I think he has already uh, filmed it. It's, it's just editing and publishing it about the AF in OM1. Not sure if he's targeting this particular problem, or uh, would I say problem, but what it will do, it will give you more tips on how to use OM1 and its autofocus, because it seems to work a bit differently than EM1 Mark III or and the other older models. Be sure to subscribe to his channel so you won't miss that video because it's going to be interesting, I'm, I'm sure. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.